I would like to uh, welcome you to our Industry Innovation Days, uh, which are part of the cost action T1402 on quantifying the value of structural health monitoring. I'm extremely happy that we have been uh, organizing this event and I'm extremely happy about the uh, support by, by Helda Sosa and I would also like a special welcome Antonio Sosa as an executive board member of Puisa. So, um, and uh, we are most, uh, most of us are physically here, but uh, there's also one guest to be introduced also later, Jon Kühler, who you may have just heard saying hello. Uh, this uh, is Jon Kühler joining via Skype. Uh, but uh, later something more. Uh, we will be uh, working through today the case studies, but uh, after, after the welcome, after the introduction of the cost action, after uh, some words on the case studies, which uh, role they are playing, then we have the individual uh, case study presentations, we will have a panel discussion afterwards and uh, they once then concluded with a uh, networking dinner for which you are all uh, welcome and we can continue our discussions then more informally. Uh, on day two we uh, will have a um, standardization perspective uh, where we are introducing our activities and maybe they, may, they should be complemented with something more. We will try to explore it on day two and uh, the last part of day two relates only to our cost action t one four or 2 where we are working on uh, integrating the input which uh, we have collected from these two days directly to our activities. So this was a short overview. Uh, again, uh, welcome and I would like now to give the word to Antonio Sosa, Executive Board Member of Brisa and we are uh, extremely happy that you joined. Thank you. Brisa was created in 1972. It's uh, one of the oldest companies, uh, concessionaires in Europe, in line with the, in the, uh, in line with the other concessionaires in Italy, France, and Spain. In fact, in fact, uh, we have a, a very good footprint. We managed six concessions uh, spread by uh, 19 motorways about 1,600 kilometers and uh, which means more or less 40% of the network in Portugal. But in, in terms of total revenues, we have a market share of 50%. Our network uh, is, uh, as we, we said, the, the backbone of the system in Portugal. We are from the north to the south, and uh, um, we run this this concession. The, the main concession uh, for 45 years. So the shareholders are the um, Aveold Portuguese group, family group, um, with um, with roots in industry. Um, and uh, with the business in healthcare and uh, chemicals. And uh, the second partner is a, a fund uh, that you may know, uh, Arcos. Our, our figures are very good. We are, the, in fact, the, the bigger operator uh, in Portugal. Uh, slightly above the ANA, ANA is the uh, airport's operator. Uh, the, 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 we grew 6% um, this year, so we are in a in good, good way. 
And our portfolio uh, is uh, like this. The six, we run everything uh, in these six concessions, except, except uh, in Autostradas do Atlantic, that we only do road assistance and uh, maintenance of the equipment. For the, the other five, we, we, uh, we do a complete operation. Uh, these secondary companies uh, provide services to the, the, the concessionaires. And I will talk briefly about Brise Operação and Brise Gestão de Infraestruturas. In fact, they are the responsible for operation and maintenance. We have this uh, separating two companies, the operations company is uh, centralized at the operational coordination center is a big structure that we develop by our own technology and we centralized everything about operations in this building is very very impressive the other company that matters for today is Brisa uh, management of infrastructures. It's uh, BGI. So this is the figures that uh, that, that company runs, and we have, as you can see, more than two thousand and five and five hundred structures. Um, One thousand and three hundred gantries and. Every, every other equipment. We have a complete program of monitoring for everything that interest in the that matters in the in the uh, highways, and I don't bore with this. And our ambition today is create a real asset management system. We are now concluding the, uh, the design phases and by the end of the year we start with implementation of this system uh, with a complete catalogue of the assets with the integrated vision. It's not, we have some management systems for structure, for bridges, for uh, pavements, but they are independent. They don't talk uh, with each other. It's not, this is not good for a, a, a very uh, healthy management. So we need a, an integrated vision for the, the assets. Uh, we need to implement an effective risk management uh, and we have now de defined the risk metrics. Uh, and we have digital, digitalized everything. So we have, we have to have digital monitoring for this process for uh, achieve the, the goal. The idea is reinforce a culture of maintenance. It's very important. Uh, until 2012, our company uh, invested 300 million euros per year. New, new projects, new designs, new bridges, new motorways. It's, uh, uh, I, I, I used to joke with my engineers saying that uh, it was a time of uh, open bar. For the engineers, it's really a good thing to build a new uh, bridges and new motorways. But after that, we spend about 50, 60 million euros per year in maintenance, in repairs, in widenings, in, in maintenance. And this is, uh, it's very important to change the culture for this. So, for the, the digital monitoring, we are now uh, 
uh, with a big project with Dr. Elder Souza. It's a, uh, a case study of this uh, cost action for the Luzia Bridge. Uh, the Luzia Bridge is uh, one of our longest um, bridge. And what we pretend is to uh, to change the vision of the maintenance of the bridge uh, until the end of the, co the concession. How this uh, uh, social health monitoring of this bridge can help us to define a new maintenance policy. Thank you uh, and uh, I hope you enjoyed the conference and the city. Thank you very much. So thank you, Alex, for to be here. I know it, it's people from the executive board and they have a full agenda, so it's uh, a pleasure to have here. And I think it was very valuable to see, which I think is the scope of this uh, small workshop, mainly bringing these decision-maker people with their uh, concerns, their priorities, to share with this community, so our researchers, so we can bring some bridges in terms of benefit. So, in this context, as Sebastian said in the beginning, uh, under the scope of this cost action, quantify the social health monitoring, we came up with a concept, we call it Industry Innovation Days, uh, which is being organized and led by myself, Jochen Koller, that is uh, uh, online, I think, uh, Maria Pina, which is here, Sebastian Thomas, which is the chair of the action, and Wim Courage is also here. So we are trying to figure out a little bit how we could have a small strategy here to better communicate with these decision makers. Yes? So what I will present briefly is the concept to this audience and I hope that this uh, might be something that triggers you from the industry side to better engage with us because I also believe that today and tomorrow the teachers, the lecturers for this workshop uh, are not we, it's you, the decision makers that should share with us what you want from this cost action or how this cost action could help you, as Antonio Souza said, for example, to have a better maintenance and uh, better strategies to get higher efficiency levels in terms of uh, <coughs> budget, I would say. So basically, very briefly, I will outline the objective, the concept, uh, and then what it contains in terms of, uh, of these industry innovation days. So, the bottom line came, this is a nice bridge, which in fact is the Lazira Bridge, the case study from Riza, just to <coughs> illustrate, sorry, to illustrate that this is a big structure, so there are issues about maintenance, about repairs, or whatever. So, and then we have a lot of information, I will show you also for this bridge, about, uh, we have a finite element model, for example, for this bridge, <coughs> very fine, with a lot of information, either from a numerical analysis side as also from the monitoring side. All this uh, structure for this specific case, it's, a, I would say, a very comprehensive case study, perhaps not yet in this issue of the value of information level, but in terms of available information, there is a lot of information available about the structure, about the monitoring system, materials, loading, whatever. So, at the end, why I'm just showing this small video, is there is a lot of work done in this structure. Uh, this is a finite model that was developed uh, in the software. So a very finite model, everything was included uh, to a point that even uh, we simulate the construction sequence since the first pile until the end of the operational lifetime. And so the question now is here about, well, we have all of this, all this information, so uh, comprehensive database, the issue is how we get some benefit, not for the researchers, because for researchers, I can say that I have already published eight, ten papers just due to this bridge, which I'm very happy from the academy point of view, but from the industry point of view, uh, we, I think we not yet get this benefit to save some costs, yes? So the idea is that perhaps with this, all this information that we have, uh, and you can see very briefly here in terms of monitoring, 
I show the three main phases, as I said, is a very comprehensive case where we have data since the early stage of the construction. We can see results from the fillet element model, results from the monitoring side. Things get quite well in terms of uh, <coughs> accordance between both. And so the issue is, how can I now transfer all this knowledge to the owner? How I can use this in terms, what to do with this? What, uh, at the end of the day, I think is to have a decision at the end of the year, the amount of the budget that these people signing the checks for the next year, the next five years. So I think we need to go in that direction. And in that context, these industry innovation days, <coughs> um, and in the cost action, we've been working uh, with the experts on the value of information, setting up a framework that is able in certain way to answer these questions, mainly in the perspective of what is the benefit in terms of cost. So, a lot of information is included in this framework. I will not take too, too much in detail, it's not the purpose of this presentation. But you can see that we have information about uh, the knowledge about the decision context, information about the assets. So in this case, as an example, is the zero bridge. What are the objectives? In this case, minimize costs or maximize income if there is tools. <laughs> we have some inputs in the monitoring. We may have some indicators <laughs> that we need to select properly to optimize this value of information and of course from a decision point of view also what are the remedial actions if something is needed to do in terms of maintenance repair so this is a framework that aims at the end of the day give to the owners a plan that tells you based on all this information how to do uh, a better <coughs> uh, approach for the asset management of a structure so in this context <coughs> We know all of this, but uh, mainly the object of Industry Innovation Days is to improve the uh, decision basis, okay? And uh, mainly pushing all this discussion about the value of information for a more, as I say, more cost-efficient and reliable and safe strategies from the decision-maker point of view, okay? So all of this work we are trying to show this in these Industry Innovation Days is not from the research point of view, but mainly from the decision point of view, okay? So the audience that is, we are aiming to attend is the, is the industry. So, and uh, the idea is that, in fact, we need uh, to jump, yeah? So, it's a very brief graph. Uh, so there is a lot of work in academia, and we know that there are some spin-off startups that do a lot of monitoring, new sensors, new systems, but in fact we need to push this very to the society level where in fact we can, let's say, give a payback to these <laughs> decision makers that they want or they wish to invest better and so we as uh, experts should at least try to help them to do a better decisions by improving mainly <laughs> the level of technology that is being applied in the, uh, on this framework. So, we are aiming that with these case studies that we have in this construction, of course, each one has their own specificities, the degree of maturity, but the objective is that we reach to this level, that we may have some system prototypes <laughs> effectively demonstrated in the field, like a product in terms of, okay, we are giving evidence that these case studies that we are discussing here, that were selected basis on the good knowledge that they can offer, that in fact we have a level that, uh, a maturity level that gives confidence to the decision makers to use them, to invest. So when they decide the budget, perhaps you can have a small budget to invest. This is the main concept. So, and all this should be done. So basically, we decided uh, last year on uh, in the meeting so that we should have a dedicated workshop for the decision makers which is taking place today and tomorrow so this was the first uh, step which I hope honestly that you take the most benefit of it by presenting these case studies and we are uh, <coughs> looking forward for questions and ideas and also some special sessions in Streetful Conference not so in the part of uh, very specific research, but more generic uh, 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 conference where we 
these decision makers normally they like to go to see what is the latest cutting edge technologies in this field of management. So in this, we are aiming at the end of these illustration days, <coughs> composed by these two uh, events, that we may be able to do a step forward and translate this value of SHGM terminology, which is quite uh, sometimes complex and dense in terms of uh, the technique itself, to something more practical decision making for your side in the industry. So, in the workshop, which we are taking place now, our objective is that mainly getting your feedback, what is your expectations, your exp experience, even your frustrations in using monitor products, it's good to know what is something that went bad, good, whatever. Uh, <coughs> uh, and this also would be serve as a um, a step forward to reach to the end of this construction, saying that, okay, we have this co these case studies that we are uh, trying to explore the value of information on structural monitoring, but with this uh, workshop and these sessions, we can also say that uh, this was also discussed with the real world in terms, we approach the decision makers, we present these, and we got them the impression, their feedback, what they feel, and we, as far as is possible, take this feedback into the case study analysis. Okay? I think we bring more credibility, um, a robust solution, and all of us in a win-win partnership wins, I think. So, <laughs> we will have also, as I said, this workshop, and just to get you in advance, there is two special sessions in uh, two conferences, this year and the next year, which is the APS conference. We selected this conference because it's quite generic, uh, it's very towards uh, practitioners, engineers, decision makers, which I think is a, we catch a good audience here. And we also are aiming to get some marginal benefit for other two uh, uh, conference, more specific, uh, more specific, the first one in social monitoring, and the second one, Yavmas, more also very interesting from the decision making point of view because it's also focused on maintenance next uh, this year in Australia. So we are having these special sessions here and we are going to take a little bit on this context of industry innovation days as well in these special sessions. Um, <clears throat> so finally I will say why invest in ACGM on civil engineering structures? So we need to show evidence to you, decision makers, that is worthwhile and there is a benefit on applying these systems. Um, we really want, at least as the leader of this event and trying to push it forward, is uh, I'll be very happy that this target audience, owners, authorities, concessionaries, that you also are happy with this discussion and you take some notes for you for the future. And mainly because we are working on in this construction at the moment in real case studies, so real structures. As far as I know, there is 16 case studies? 19. 19, yeah. Okay, I'm not saying, of course, depends on the level <coughs> of uh, maturity, knowledge on each one, but there is a European worldwide movement with a lot of case studies from different countries <coughs> that compose this portfolio for you to help you in terms of <coughs> getting a better knowledge on these uh, real applications fields, not only to your own structures, as the Zero Bridge case, but worthwhile what is happening and okay as I said uh, it will be very nice as well that for example in this, uh, this special session that will be in France that we could have a formal joint collaboration between academy and industry maybe for example as a joint paper where you as a decision maker could go to the conference perhaps present the problem and then there is your uh, colleague that tries to solve and present a solution for uh, your problem okay so this has been already closed, the, the submission of the abstracts. We succeeded with 12 abstracts and we are looking forward in November, uh, like September this year, that uh, hopefully if you are there and also see a little bit more what we are working on. Finally, and to close, I need to also move forward. Uh, in terms of deliverables, we have some deliverables already specified for in this industry innovation days. But the, so we have uh, <coughs> okay some dissemination um, deliverables because it's important at this level of the cost action uh, concept. But the one that uh, 
I will highlight in this uh, workshop and uh, we want to discuss with you as well as an output is what I call here a technical recommendation uh, to support uh, owners in a potential renegotiation of the contract terms with the local authorities. So, for example, <coughs> uh, I think as uh, Antonio Souza said, we want to change a little bit uh, uh, the paradigm of asset management to something more uh, proactive rather than reactive and perhaps this ACGM issue might help you in also as a contribution for this objective. So what we are trying to work, and this is also something that we will discuss during these two days, is that we are working in a technical recommendation that is a draft, an idea, so basically something that could be a very short document, uh, mainly towards decision makers. We would like to have your help in, in the writing side of this document because it's a top level document that will take, extract, the, let's say, the most uh, significant outputs from this cost action, from the guidelines that are being prepared, summarize this in something very short, up to four pages, I would say like this, no more than this, and then a second part, like a re request form, that, for example, a bridge owner uh, that has a structure <laughs> that he wants, perhaps, renegotiate the how they do maintenance on that structure, they could, uh, with this document, which has some, let's say, credibility, because it's signed from a very big community at the European level, even worldwide, that we show evidence that if <coughs> uh, your structure that is being monitored, and it's giving evidence according with the guidelines that we are producing this cost action, you can perhaps attach this very short document to your report that you need to deliver to the, order, to the, uh, the authorities and then a request, perhaps, to try to say civilize the authorities that we would like to talk with you, case by case at this stage perhaps, but how we could do a little bit uh, better the maintenance of this bridge. Uh, could we try to renegotiate the next inspection, perhaps not in the next year, the following year, uh, if not possible, could we try to optimize the extension of inspection in terms of the time that you will invest? I believe that, at least my experience, <coughs> this is in fact what the decision makers want to see. Is there is a cycle here that it closes. There is a lot of work and evidence. Okay, monitoring gives valuable information, tells you that if the structure is safe, might tell you some indications in a more proactive approach when something goes down. But also, it's also a thing that we need to move forward is to change the paradigm in terms of <coughs> asset management. So, what we are trying here also to produce, this is under discussion and open to the audience, is trying to produce a very short document <laughs> as, a, as something that if the owner wishes to ask for a renegotiation, he can download this from the cost website and uh, According to the guidelines, if there is evidence, they can attach this to a technical report, submit to the authorities, and try to speak with the authorities, maybe, to see if we can change this. I know that this is not, you don't do this in a one single step, it takes sometimes, it's a culture, it's just, so, but I think you need to start from some, some point. So, and to conclude, <laughs> I want just to highlight this document, it's, as I said, a top level document. So it is written in a way for decision makers. It's non-technical, okay? That is mainly based on cost basis evidence uh, that there is benefit. And uh, I hope that we can at least try to produce this to help you and if this is for fun. Okay. <coughs> and uh, thank you very much. And I hope that you enjoy these two days as much as possible. And please ask to this, our colleagues that we present today, these case studies, everything that you want to ask, there are no silly questions, if something that I want to ask, ask it, because today, in my opinion, <laughs> you are the lecturers, you are the teachers to this research community that will highly appreciate your feedback in what we are doing to get at the end a better product for you, mainly for the decision makers. Thank you very much.